Here's a picture of Galileo. Galileo was from Italy. He lived in the late 1500s and early 1600s, and he did a lot of noteworthy things. Uh, and one of those was the improvements that he made to the telescope. The original telescopes from that were made by Dutch lens makers had a magnification factor of about three. In other words, they could make something appear about three times as large, or about one-third the distance away as it normally would. And Galileo was able to produce telescopes that had a magnification of about 30 times. And it also occurred to Galileo to take the telescope and look at the stars at night, and at the planets, and at the moon. The, the telescope had obvious military application uh, before that, but Galileo was the first person to think to look at the night sky, and he was the first person to see all the amazing things that you can see when you look at the night sky with magnification. Galileo was also one of the early proponents of the, of the heliocentric view of the solar system. Here's a diagram showing the solar system with the sun at the center. So this is what we would call a heliocentric system. And it's also sometimes called the Copernican system, named after Nicholas Copernicus one of the first people before Galileo to propose this idea. Um, Copernicus was afraid to promote this idea because it went against the current teaching of the time, the teaching of all of the, the professors at the time and the teaching of the church at the time. And Galileo actually got in a lot of trouble for promoting this idea. But there you see it, the sun at the center. And I'll talk about one of Galileo's observations that helped establish this system as being correct as opposed to the geocentric system. Look at the Earth here. The Earth is going around the Sun in an orbit like this. And here's Venus over here. Venus is also going around the Sun in its orbit. Now when you look from the Earth to Venus, Venus is a certain distance away. And Venus can move closer because Venus could come over, Venus is moving in a, in a smaller, tighter orbit. It moves a little bit faster. So over time, it catches up. Maybe Earth moves this far while Venus moves this far. So they end up being pretty close together. And then when you look from Earth to Venus, you see Venus as appearing relatively large in your field of vision in your telescope because they're fairly close together. But if Venus swings on around here, to the other side, like this, if Venus swings on around and is pretty far away from Earth, say Earth has only moved on around this far, because Earth is moving more slowly. Now when you look from Earth to Venus, Venus is much farther away, and it consequently appears smaller in the field of vision uh, of the telescope. And that makes sense. When things are closer, they appear larger. And when they're, when they're farther away, they take up less room in your field of vision. That would not happen if the Earth were at the center. If you imagine the Earth being right here, so, so think, think of this as the Earth for a minute instead of the Sun. We'll put an E there. That's the Earth. And here goes Venus or orbiting around the Earth. If Venus is orbiting the Earth in a perfect circle, then Venus is always the same distance away from the Earth, no matter where it is in the orbit. So when you looked at Venus, it would always appear the same size in the field of vision of the telescope. So what, what this reasoning gives us is a way to test the theory. So you take a telescope and you look at Venus and you see, does Venus always appear to be the same size as would be predicted by the geocentric system, or does it appear to be larger at some times and smaller at some times, as would be predicted by the heliocentric system. And when, when Galileo looked, he noted that the, the size of Venus in his telescope lens, or in his field of view, appeared to be larger at some times and smaller at some times, exactly as one would expect if they were orbiting the sun arranged the way you see here in this diagram. And, um, and Venus also has phases. Notice that if you look, look at um, Venus here, you're seeing this side of Venus, and 
you're seeing it light on one side and dark on the other. And you can't really tell that with the naked eye. But with a telescope, you can actually see the disk of Venus and you can see part of it lit up. And exactly what parts you see lit up depends on the relative orientation of the Sun and the Earth and, the, and Venus. And that all changes uh, week after week and month after month. And it changes exactly the way it would be predicted to change according to the heliocentric system. So it was actual data from Galileo's observations that, that uh, caused the Copernican system to be established scientifically as opposed to the geocentric system. And all of this was a really big deal because Galileo was actually beginning to dismantle the Aristotelian view of the world. Going back before Ptolemy to Aristotle, Aristotle's understanding of the world was what was dominating education for century after century after century, all the way up to the 1500s. And Galileo, more than anyone, started to tear this apart with his new ideas. Not only did he produce evidence for the, the Copernican system or the heliocentric system, but he saw a lot of other things that were significant as well. He looked at Jupiter and he saw moons around Jupiter. And here's a photograph of the night sky. This was not um, Galileo's photograph. They didn't have cameras back then. But this is something like he might have seen. This is a star over here. I don't know exactly which one. But this is Jupiter here. And these little dots near Jupiter are moons of Jupiter. And Galileo was able to see four of Jupiter's moons. And as those moons orbited Jupiter, their position relative to Jupiter would change night after night. And he documented that. Here's an actual letter that Galileo wrote, and this is in a museum, I believe, in a, at the University of Michigan in, uh, in their Rare Documents collection. And, um, and in this letter, he's talking about the telescope that he had helped work on. And if you scroll down, you see these diagrams that he drew. And what these diagrams are, this is Jupiter, and then these other little dots are the moons of Jupiter. And you can see in the diagrams that sometimes the moons are arranged in one position around Jupiter and sometimes in other positions. And he's describing how the positions of the moons change relative to Jupiter night after night. And um, this was not just a, a simply a discovery of the moons of Jupiter. This was contradicting Aristotle's view of the solar system. Aristotle had particular beliefs about the solar system. He believed that there were a certain number of planets and, and they were that that number was perfect and that everything was perfectly round and unblemished. And when Galileo starts seeing these extra things in here, moons around Jupiter, that throws off the, the supposed perfection of Aristotle's view of the solar system. Here's a picture of the moon. Seen with magnification you can see the craters on the moon and the highlands on the moon, the mountainous regions or the hilly regions on the moon. And this also contradicted Aristotle's idea that the, the heavenly bodies are perfect unblemished spheres. And here's a picture of the sun Galileo didn't see exactly this. This was taken with modern equipment. But notice that there are spots on the sun. Galileo was able to see spots on the sun. Now don't look at the sun with the telescope. Galileo pointed the telescope at the sun but then had the image from the telescope directed onto a piece of paper. And he could see the dark spots on the sun. And, and these today are thought to be stormy regions on the sun that are at lower temperature. But Galileo noted, noted the, the spots on the sun, and this again contradicted Aristotle's idea that the heavenly bodies are perfect spheres and unblemished spheres. So here are blemishes on the moon, blemishes on the sun, extra moons around Jupiter. All of these things were beginning to discredit Aristotle's view of the world. And Galileo had other important ideas that also contradicted Aristotle. His ideas on forces, his ideas on friction, his ideas on falling, falling bodies, all of these were able to be experimentally demonstrated and all helped to discredit the Aristotelian view of the world. Now Galileo had a lot of correct ideas but he and, and he was able to start dismantling the incorrect Aristotelian ideas but he didn't put together a whole new understanding of the world. That would come later with Isaac Newton. But Galileo was one of the people that was able to crack the mold of the ancient thinking and, and get the scientists thinking on the right track.